welcome back to the Wellesley Needlepoint Collections Learning Channel. What we want to talk about today is the difference between a French knot and a colonial knot. This is a question we often get in the store. And um, so we're going to practice a couple, both of these techniques and with a number of different kinds of threads so you can see the different effects that you can get. So first we'll cover the French knot. Okay, make sure we're in the... So the French knot makes a great bumpy little um, knot. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's fairly easy to do. Um, you're just going to bring your thread up through a hole, hold it, your needle in your right hand if you're right-handed, hold your thread in your left hand, and simply wrap the thread once around, and then go back through the hole. Now the thread that I am using here is um, brown paper packages, silk and ivory. So this is a, a slightly thicker thread and I'm doing this on an 18 mesh. Uh, so that's one wrap. And then I'm just gonna gently go back down through the hole. Now I did not go down through the same hole that I came up in. I typically will do it in a basket weave or a tent stitch going one to the right because um, it's less likely to go through the canvas. And the key to making a good French knot is to not let go with of the strand. So that's my first French knot. I'll show you that again. Come up through the hole. Hold on to this with your left hand. Having your needle in your right hand, obviously if you're right-handed, switch left-handed, switch this. Wrap it and then go back down in the hole next to it. The key to making a good French knot is don't let go with the, of this strand right here. Hang on to it till the very last minute and you'll find that your knots will be more even. Then if you let go of it, you might be likely to get a, um, a big loop if you let go of it early. Now French knots can be modified. They're not technically a French knot. They're more a wrapped knot, but if you wanted this knot to be a little bit thicker, you could wrap it not just once, but twice, as many times as you would like. The other thing that you could do is use a thicker thread. I'm already using a fairly thick thread, but I just wanna show you what happens if you wrap it multiple times. It will get a little bit thicker, ever so slightly. All right, I'll do one more, just so you can see. One, two, and then, oops, yes, that's right, right there. Okay. Now I'll show you what it looks like if you use different kinds of threads doing that same type of. All right, so now we're going to do French knots again using, this is vineyard. It's a slightly thinner silk thread, one wrap, and we go to the right. one wrap and to the right, there we go. You can certainly go back down in the same hole if you have fair, fair amount of confidence that your knot is big enough that it won't poke through. So this time I'm gonna do two wraps and show you what it looks like. One, two, so that's what, that's vineyard. All right, now I wanna show you what happens if you use it. Splendor. This is four strands of Rainbow Gallery Splendor. One, oops, just once. Some more dainty knot. I've made beautiful teddy bears by just doing, this is a double in the Splendor by just packing French knots right up next to each other in a nice basket weave pattern. And it gives a nice lumpy, so there's your splendor. And then finally, it's also kind of fun to add some glitter. If maybe you're doing um, a seed in a watermelon or a part of a flower. So here I'm using silk lame braid Got some threads back there that I'm gonna get tangled in here. Or you could combine a little glitter filament into one of these earlier threads that you've used. 
use a combination of wool and um, uh, a, a really thin crineck or petite silk lame. This is a double wrap. There we go. So that is the French braid, the French knot, excuse me, done in a number of different types of threads. Got some thread tangling going on in back. So next, right alongside, uh, whoopsie, get back in there. Next, right alongside it, I'll do a series of colonial knots and you'll see the difference between them. Okay, now for the colonial knot. And we I tidied up all the threads in back. They're getting messy back there. All right, the colonial knot, how it's different is it tends to be a little bit more round and it sometimes has a dimple right in the middle of it. Uh, whereas the French knot kind of sits up a little bit off of the canvas and can have a little bit of an angled look. So to do a colonial knot, you're just going to run your needle underneath the thread like that, kind of grab it and then wrap the thread around the needle once and go back down. Again, hold on to the, the tail as it goes in and it'll be less likely to be loopy. And let's do that one more time. That one looks a little funny. Run it underneath and wrap it once. This is the exact same thread as what we used before. You'll see that this knot is a little bit bigger now, because it's bigger, if you aren't getting kind of the effect that you want, if it's got a little bit of an angle to it, you can certainly probably go down in the same hole. There you go. The only time you can't go down in the same hole is when the knot is not quite big enough and it's likely to um, pop back through the hole. So again, we're looping underneath. Wrapping once around, and in this case, I am going to go back down in the same hole. It has a nice, so this knot is a little bit bigger. It tends to have that little dimple in the middle, which can have a nice effect. Now I want to show you the same knot, that colonial knot, using vineyard. You're going to wrap underneath it, go over it once, and I'll go down right above it. Okay, we'll do another one. Go underneath it, wrap it once. Go down like that. I don't know if it's going to pop through if I do it into the same hole. Let's see if it... Oh, it'll stay. Going underneath it, wrapping it and back down. So that is the difference between the French knot and the colonial knot. So one more thing that's worth learning today that is um, related to these knots is something called the knot on a stick. And this is used a lot in um, uh, you can use it for beards, and you could use it for like the stamen of a flower. Um, it, so in, when we do, and well, it could be either a colonial or a French knot. Let's do a French knot. So we would grab it and maybe do two wraps. And instead of going down quite close to where we had come up in it, we're actually going to go back through the canvas a little further from where we started. And this gives you a nice little effect. Uh, this is great for, um, like, a, like I said, on a flower you could use it. Um, you could use it in a beard. And in fact, we have a video on our website available. It's a cyber video that you can purchase um, that teaches this technique, among others, like turkey tufting. It's called the Beards and Fur um, Cyber Video. And just like I've done here, you can see all, a number of different techniques that you can learn 
um, at the privacy of your own home. We'll send you everything that you need to follow along with the instruction. And um, if you don't have access to a local needlepoint shop, it's a nice way to learn some additional uh, um, uh, stitches that you maybe wouldn't be able to learn otherwise.